Hello. It is as shocking as it is ever more familiar. A woman says she was sexually harassed at work by a male colleague who thought he could get away with it. Tonight, we hear for the first time from an actor who was performing in a main show in the West End when she was harassed on stage in front of an audience of thousands. She says what happened to her is far from unusual. This actor has asked to remain anonymous. She told us she's worried that if she speaks publicly, it could be detrimental to her career. Well, her story is a stark reminder that behind the bright lights of some of the world's world's most famous shows, there lies a serious issue that many are too scared to report. Rhea Chatterjee has this exclusive report. The one thing that sticks out in my mind is when I was in a show, we get to the end and we do the shoulder lift. His hand was between my legs and he was doing things that he shouldn't have been doing. One anonymous testimony. It made me feel really vulnerable, obviously, because there were over a thousand people in the audience watching and I could do nothing about it. Minor things which I've had throughout my career have been general use of inappropriate language towards me, grabbing of my breasts. The actor has been working for over a decade, mostly in the West End. Time's up, many are shouting on harassment within London's theatre industry. What's been revealed recently is the amount of sort of everyday sexism and the amount of compromise that people have faced. And it's not just actresses, it's people across the industry. This director told me lines are often blurred in the name of artistic spontaneity. We have historically and always in the theatre had fight directors. You can't improvise a fight because it's dangerous and someone will get hurt. And yet you can improvise a sex scene where psychologically that can be far more damaging. Jessica says the culture can be overly friendly and relaxed. Mix that with a lack of official rules and boundaries are often crossed. How difficult is it for an actor who's perhaps trying to make her way, trying to get more roles, to report an incident of harassment? We trade on very flimsy reputations in this industry where you go from job to job and you, uh, you try and keep working and you rely on all of your contacts. And actually, nobody really wants to be known as the, the actor who's well known for the harassment claim. It shouldn't be that way, she insists, which is why information is key. Actors are being sent out to drama schools to share their experiences. Trained intimacy directors will be introduced to choreograph certain scenes. The fledgling Time's Up movement here in Theatreland is ready to initiate change. I hope to see that more women feeling confident and empowered and feeling bold and brave to call out forms of discrimination. How easy do you think that is though? I don't think it's, I don't think anything's easy when fighting for liberation. I didn't report it. I guess I thought that, yeah, it probably would jeopardise my career or it would get laughed off. The Time's Up movement is already changing things. Things are coming to light now and I think it will be a slow process, um, but it will change. It has to change. Well, one woman's powerful account there of what she says happened to her. But just how much of an issue is sexual harassment in the theatre? Well, a recent survey of a thousand theatre professionals and students found that one in three had experienced sexual harassment. Eight percent in total were sexually harassed while at work. And of those who said they were harassed, 67 percent didn't report it. Well, in a moment, we'll be speaking to Georgia Snow from the Stage magazine who carried out that survey. Uh, but first, Rhea's here. Rhea, from what you've heard today, change is clearly needed, but what, what is happening? Well, change is happening, but it's happening slowly. And it's important to note that theatre is ever so slightly behind film when it comes to the Time's Up campaign. So in London, 
it's still a very small movement, but it's growing slowly. And it may be that a lot of people working in the theatre industry here haven't heard about it, but that's not to say there isn't a lot of work going on behind the scenes. So the Time's Up group have set up a fund that people can access if they need support after a specific incident. They're also having regular meetings to get the awareness out there, encouraging women to share their stories, share information. And also there are a lot of other organisations working hard too. So for example, Equity, the Actors' Union, has for a long time been working on this and they have a phone line, for example, which people can access if something's happened. So clearly there is something happening and people start to take this very seriously. Georgia Snow from Stage Magazine, um, you guys conducted that survey with some very worrying statistics there. First, the one in three of uh, professionals and students that say they've experienced harassment, but more shocking perhaps is that 67% of those didn't report it. What does that say about the culture in, in theatre land? I think the figures themselves are pretty sobering in terms mm. of how widespread this is, but you're right, we were really shocked about just how many people didn't feel like they could report it and the people that said that they didn't want to speak up of what they experienced had said that for there are several reasons why they would do this um theater is as with many creative industries is a very competitive mm. demanding industry and a lot of people are going from job to job um, and they fear that they might gain a reputation for being a troublemaker or in fact lose work um, and I think particularly with those people who are at the start of their careers when they're the most vulnerable um, that's when we, it's led to people being silenced and this culture where this behavior has been allowed to thrive. How do we combat that then? Where do you go from there? People are just we're worried about not getting any more work. We heard it from the actor that we spoke to today. I think it's really, really important that, there, that theatre creates an environment in which creativity is allowed to flourish and the art is allowed to get made, but it's an environment in which people feel empowered, that they can speak up, and they feel like if they say something, it's not going to ruin their careers. Mm. Um, I think the fact that there's a huge proportion of people that work in theatre that are freelance and maybe haven't had those channels or reporting structures in place before now, um, I think that's been a big problem. So maybe setting up structures that allow people to feel like they can raise something, whether it's informally or formally, um, and just start that conversation, I think mm. is really important. That's a really interesting point. Um, and it's interesting to see as well, of course, in Hollywood, in, in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein scandal, we heard from many, many more people, women and some men, making allegations and claims, but not so much in theatre land. Do you think that when we do start to hear, like, for example, we've heard from this one actor, that it could be tip of the iceberg stuff? I think so. I think there have been those claims that people have come forward with. Obviously, the Kevin Spacey allegations, a lot of which happened in London while he was working at the Old Vic, um, shone the spotlight on theatre. I think it's very important that to note that this isn't something that's exclusive to theatre or to any entertainment industry, um, but it is an issue and um, I'm really hoping that people are going to start addressing it. Worth pointing out there are allegations at this point yeah. against Kevin Spacey, but George Snow, thank you so much for coming in to talk to me about this. Ria as well, thank you.